The film strip provides a persistent view to the currently available images, which means you can use the film strip to display thumbnails of your images regardless of which module you're currently working with in Lightroom or which task you're performing. But the film strip provides more functionality than simply displaying your images, as we'll discover in this lesson. I'm sure it's quite obvious that you can scroll left or right among the film strip in order to display different images that are available on the film strip. We can also use the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard to navigate among the different images on the film strip. In addition, there are buttons at the extreme left and right of the film strip that allow you to scroll one image at a time. Above the row of thumbnail images, you'll also find some additional controls that allow you to adjust various options within Photoshop. At the far left, you'll find two buttons that allow you to control the display of multiple monitors within Lightroom. The first button allows you to configure the primary display, and the second allows you to either enable a second monitor, or if you right-click or control-click on the Macintosh, you can adjust options for that secondary display. There's also a button that allows you to go to the grid display in the library module regardless of which display you're currently using. This even works if you're in a different module than the library module. So for example, if I were to switch to the develop module, clicking on this button will take me back to the grid display in the library module. Naturally, I can continue to change the display as desired when I'm working within the library module, but this is a great shortcut to always get back to your grid display. The next pair of buttons are the back and forward buttons. These actually affect the overall interface within Lightroom. So for example, if I press shift tab to hide the panels and then display the film strip, I can go back to see the configuration as it was previously, or I can move forward into different configurations. Keep in mind that this does not affect which images are being viewed. So if I were to switch to a different collection of images, I would not be automatically switched back to a different collection. These buttons only affect the configuration of the interface. Using them can be a little bit confusing, but it is a quick way to get back to a particular configuration for the panels or other elements within Lightroom. Next, you'll see an indication of the current set of images we're looking at. But not only does it give us information about the particular images, including the collection, the total number of photos, how many are selected, and the file name of the current image, it also provides us with an opportunity to change the collection that we're currently looking at. If you click on this summary text, you'll get a pop-up that allows you to change which collection you're looking at. At the top of the menu, you'll find several options that include all photographs to view every single image that's currently being managed by Lightroom for the current catalog, your quick collection, the most recently imported images, or a list of favorite sources. In this case, I've not yet defined any favorites, but I can do so at the bottom of this menu. Simply clicking Add to Favorites will cause the current collection to be added to the favorites list. This makes it very fast to get to some of your most commonly used collections. If you want to clear the favorites list, you can simply choose Clear Recent Sources from the bottom of the menu. In between, you'll find a list of your most recently accessed sources, which can include both collections and folders, depending on how you navigated to particular images within Lightroom. So for example, here I could switch to my images from the Palouse very quickly and easily, or go back to the South Africa images, which are now listed as a favorite. We can also filter the images very quickly using controls found directly on the film strip itself. The filter settings are found at the top right of the film strip. We can turn on the filtering with the switch at the right of these controls. We can then choose a preset filter or establish our own settings. Note that if we save settings here, they will reflect the overall filtering. I'll press the backslash key to bring up our filters, and you can see here I can set a variety of parameters for the filtering. If I then click on the pop-up and choose Save Current Settings as a new preset, that preset will reflect not only the settings that are available here on the film strip, but all of the settings available in the overall filtering. I'll press the backslash key again to hide those filters for now and switch back to my loop display. Besides using a preset for the filtering, though, we do have some options available directly on the film strip. Simply click the filter label to expand the list of available options right here on the film strip. Here we have the opportunity to filter images based on the flag that's been assigned to them, either pick, unflagged, or rejected, as well as the star ratings and color labels. In order to use these controls, you need to turn on the filter. For the flags, you simply click an option to toggle it on or off. For example, here I can say that I only want to see flagged photos, but there don't happen to be any flagged photos in this particular collection. Clicking again will turn that option off. If I want to include multiple criteria, 
I can do so as well. For example, I could say that I want to see both the rejected and the picked photos. Although in this case, once again, there are no images that meet that criteria. For star ratings, there are two basic controls. First, we can choose whether we want the rating to be greater than or equal to a particular value, less than or equal to, or exactly equal to. So for example, if I click rating is equal to, I can then specify the particular rating that I want to use to filter my images. For example, I'd like to see my very best images from South Africa, so I'm going to set the rating to 5 stars so that I can see only images where the rating is equal to exactly 5 stars. Well, in this case, I guess I didn't take very many good pictures because there are no images that have been rated with 5 stars. Let's try 4 stars. There we go. Now I have some images available. They may not be 5 star images, but I guess they are the best images I captured in South Africa. In order to be able to see more images and to take a look at the color labels, I'm going to set this option back to is greater than or equal to, and then set it to zero stars, in fact, so that I'll actually be able to see all of the images again. Then I can take a look at color labels. Here we can specify multiple color labels that we'd like to include in the filter. So for example, if I click red, I'll see only those images that are labeled with a red color label. But I can also add to the criteria here by turning on other color label options. By doing so, I'll be able to see any image that has any of these color labels assigned to it. Remember, you can only assign one color label to an individual image, so there's no way that you could say you want to see images that have been labeled both red and yellow, for example. And of course, if you create criteria that you think you'll want to use again in the future, you can click the pop-up and save the current settings as a new preset. As I've been filtering these images, you might have noticed that you're able to see some of the criteria about the image right on the film strip with the thumbnail displays. You can change these at any time by adjusting the preferences. In Windows, you would choose Edit from the menu. On Macintosh, you would choose Lightroom, and then Preferences. Click on the Interface tab, and you can see the film strip options. We have checkboxes to show the ratings and picks, the badges, the stat counts, and the option to show a preview of the image that the mouse is currently over in the Navigator pane of the Library module. In addition, we have the option to show tooltips that contain information about the particular photo that we've moved the mouse over. I'll turn this option on so that you can see those tooltips on the film strip. I'll click OK to apply these settings, and then as I mouse over the image, notice that I get a tooltip showing me the file name, the exposure settings, and the lens that was used. With so much to offer, I actually find the film strip to be more useful in most cases than the grid view found in the library module. In particular, I appreciate the ability to use the film strip display regardless of which module I'm working in, as well as the ability to filter images directly on the film strip.